So first Bank of Canada announcement for 2024. Woo! I know, right? Very exciting. Uh, do you think it was what everybody expected? Uh, probably. Everything everybody expected and more, right? So uh, it was a hold. Uh, no change, no increase, no yeah. decrease. I actually spoke to somebody last week who said, so what do you think? Another increase? And I thought, yeah. I thought everybody was on the same page I with think this it's now. because the December data came in yeah. a little bit on the strong side, but I mean, it didn't come in that strong. It, so the inflation was up yeah. slightly. And what's really interesting about this announcement is that there was also that monetary policy report. So certain yeah. times every year when the Bank of Canada makes their announcement, they do a monetary policy report. And I know you love it. I do too. I nerd out. I watch the whole thing because that's the point where they also tell you sort of their forecast, the right. rationale, the reasoning, what they're, what they're thinking. Yeah. Um, but this announcement was a little different. The, you know, they spoke about like underlying issues uh, that they have to continue to watch things that, you know, we're still in a hold pattern currently. Right. They just, they soften their tone. Yes. They're no longer saying we're going to go higher. Yeah. I think they're saying this is probably the top, but yeah. they're also not saying we're going lower. So and there's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. Tell and us about it. And it's called the housing market. Do you think they, that's the, the underlying? 100%. Yeah. They can't even afford to say that we're going to drop the rates because the housing market will go bonkers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, it's happening. As we sit here in January 2024, the Bank of Canada has just made their announcement. We talk to clients every day who are like, you know, is it coming? When is it coming? What's it going to look like? When are the rates going? Right. That's all anybody wants. Right. To and all the while, what has been happening? The rates are dropping. The rates are dropping. People because don't know. It has zero to do with Bank of Canada. Right. It has everything to do with the bond market. Right. And the bond market has decided that we are going to, we're going to be in a recession where rates are going to come down. Yes. And yes. that's why the rates have been dropping because is it like November, yeah. November, the rates Nobody was getting mortgage for under six two five, six no. three five. No. Yeah. And now we're I mean, we're at four and change. Yeah, so the whole time bonds have been dropping. Correct. And people who need money know about it. Yeah. People who are crazy and study these things like you and I, it's up on your laptop I can see, uh, know about it. Yeah. But people who aren't necessarily in the market don't know about it. Well, I I mean, even when I talk to my team about the bond market, I lose them. The eyes are rolling up on their heads and yeah. nobody wants to listen to me talk about the bond market, but it's yeah. like a crystal ball into the future. So I was just talking to your team before we started this video and I was saying, you know, um, my right hand at work, one of, one of the people that I work with uh, was formerly a client and she made a really interesting comment because between 2010 and 2020, interest rates were generally the same. Right. They floated somewhere between three and 4%. And as a client, she said, I came in to see you three or four times, you know, buying homes, buying rental properties, renewing mortgages, that sort of thing. And she said, we never discussed really like what the lender options were. Like, you know, here's three options, TD, Scotia, and First National. Uh, would you like to go fixed or variable? Um, here's what we predict for the next three years. She said, I would come in, we'd sit down, we'd have a coffee, we'd laugh, we'd talk about our finances, we'd discuss the monthly payment. Right. Uh, we'd sign some documents. We get a hug going out the door. I'd leave you a five-star Google review. And I knew that we didn't really have to study the science behind the rate, the mortgage, bond yields, the market, where it's all heading. Because it was kind of stable, somewhat stagnant for like 10 years. Now clients come into our office and we provide them with several options like we always did, but they need to understand the why and the where it's going. And the, you know, is it a two year or a three year? And if I take a five year, will I overpay for two years and these sort of things? And maybe you would, but I think when you're sit when, when, when you're talking to people and if you're out there and, and you, you have to know what's comfortable for you. I have never taken yeah. a one, two or three year, Yeah. nor have I taken a variable, but yeah. I'm in sales and I'm in a cyclical industry. Yeah. So I needed the safety of that five year. Yeah. I, I once took a seven. Yeah for more money than the five. Yeah. So, I mean, it just depends on people's comfort. Totally. And, 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 you know, even when rates were very, very low, it was very difficult to predict the future. Yeah. And uh, as we've talked about before, um, and, and a great comment that you made was, you know, people that are variable rate borrowers are variable rate borrowers historically. Yeah. 
They always take variable and adjustable rates. And that's the people it works for because yeah. it's not a jump in, jump off. Right. You jump in, you stay in. Right. Because otherwise you're not getting the benefit of it. And in 2020, some of 2021 as well, people that were traditionally fixed rate borrowers took variable rates. Yeah. Because they were so darn low. They were seduced by the rates. I mean, HSBC was the lowest one that we saw. 0.99% variable interest rate, yep. which was like at the time, like, you know, Free prime money. minus uh, Free one money. and a half, for Free example. Money. It was crazy, right? Now. now those rates escalated and just about everybody that has a variable or adjustable rate hates their mortgage. Right. And they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. So maybe let's talk about fixed and variable, the difference between the two and where that's all headed. Well, and I think more importantly, you need to speak to the people that have a mortgage renewal this year yeah. because that is... It's yeah. more so, I believe in 2024, everything's going to be about timing. It's yeah. always about timing, but not as crucial as it is this year because we're in an environment yeah. where things are changing fast. Yeah. So I think the best thing people can do is right now, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. I would wait until the last possible moment to renew my yeah. mortgage. If, if my renewal papers are in, I would wait. I would wait. I would stay in contact with my bank yeah. until the last possible moment because we all know yeah. the rates are going to go down. Yeah. So there's there's a lot in that for sure. They're, like they're saying that 45% of mortgages countrywide, countrywide are set to renew before 2025, yeah. which is just it's crazy. A ton, it's a ton of mortgages. It is. It really is. So number one, have time on your side. Yeah. So start the process early. Yeah. You can hold an interest rate for four months. So if you start today, we're talking about rates in I like didn't know April. That was four months. Four months. Was 90 days. Yeah, 120 days. Uh, we're starting to see some lenders come out with a little bit longer because they know what's ahead of us now. Uh, Bank of Montreal, for example, is 130 days, just a little longer than the four months. And I think you'll start to see more of that. So you get started early, you secure an interest rate, and then you watch it float down. Right. As the rate goes down, you get the benefit of the lower rate. Right. I showed you an email just before this video and we're getting a lot of these and it was an email from one of the banks that we work with. It was the underwriter and he said, can you please tell me if this file is still moving forward? Haven't heard from you. Well, that's because we started the file four months ago, secured a great interest rate and the rates fallen like 10 times between exactly. then and now. And we're just exactly. watching it go down. So we responded back and said, oh yes, absolutely moving forward. It closes in about three weeks. Um, maybe even two, and we'll just continue to watch and watch and watch 100%. it, and then take the lowest rate of what's available. It's called a U-curve. So you start here, and if the rate goes down, you get the benefit of the lower rate. If the rate goes up, you're protected at this rate. Right. So it can U-curve, hopefully it's just a straight line down, but rates have recently increased slightly. Yeah, the so, has a bond market increased right. slightly. Right, so it went down, now it's coming up. So if you have a renewal coming up, you figure out what your options are gonna be. Yeah. You secure a rate very early. You absolutely shop it around. Absolutely. Costs you nothing in most cases to shop it around. Uh, and you wait. You, you wait. wait and I, you wait and I you wait. I totally believe that. Right now, yeah. I would just wait. So when it comes to variable rates, this is uh, when people think rates, they think variable rates. Like rate cuts, they're only thinking about variable and rates. And that's why sometimes when these bank announcements come and people are so anxious about what the Bank of Canada is going to do. The Bank of Canada matters none when it comes to your five-year fixed. They they don't control that. They control the variable rate. So if you're not on a variable, the Bank of Canada speaking really matters none to you. Right, right. And, and for two years now, since these increases to uh, Prime have started, uh, variable rate and adjustable rate borrowers have said to me, is it time to lock in? You know, because remember, fixed rate, traditionally fixed rate borrowers took variable rates. So those are the people that are like, you know, kind of, waiting and watching and thinking, is it time to lock in? Right. And the answer has been no, this whole time, because fixed rates were so high. Yeah. Now that fixed rates have fallen, uh, let's talk about a first time home buyer. Okay, first time home buyers get the best interest rates as we know, they put down less than 20% in most cases, they pay a CMHC insurance premium, it's added to their mortgage. And they get the best rate. They get the best rate. So a five year fixed interest rate for a first time home buyer today, let's call it like 4.89, just to be safe, okay? okay. Now, a variable rate for the same client would probably be prime minus one. So prime is 7.2, they would get 6.2. So the difference between the two rates is 
About 1.25%. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. That's a lot. And yeah. how much is the Bank of Canada expected to cut variable rates, which is going to affect that variable rate? Right. 1.25, 1.5. <laughs> so you got to wait for all these cuts to come in. Before you see the benefit. Before you even get down to the fixed rate yeah. that you take today. Yeah. Um, so when people hear rate cuts, like they need to realize that, you know, when we're talking about Bank of Canada rate cuts, it only affects variable rate and adjustable rate mortgages. Exactly. And it's got to come down a whole bunch to even match the fixed rates that are available in this market today because they're pretty good yep. and they're expected to get better. So for anyone out there listening and you're all bummed out because the Bank of Canada held strong and didn't lower their interest rate today, if you're if you're not on a variable, it matters not zero. So. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Right. And I'd say, you know, as you start to study interest rates, if your mortgage is coming up for renewal, you make the decision. Is it fixed or variable? And if you are always, you know, uh, historically and traditionally have been a fixed rate borrower, start to take a look at the fixed. And if you've always been a variable rate borrower, start to do some research into when these cuts are expected. Right. Okay. So we have our January meeting. We know the outcome, obviously. Yes, There's no meeting in February. Good. Yes. Now, I thought there'd be a lot more optimism in today's announcement that would get buyers excited. It would give people confidence. They can't afford to do that. Why? What do because you think will happen? Because the reflection up to the housing market is disastrous. The last time they held and said, we're probably done. Yeah. That the bond market rallied down. Five-year fixed rates came down yep. close to 4%. Yes. And, and we what happened? Back in multiples. And that like, was spring. Here we go. 2023 it was one year ago, basically. Right. Yeah. And, and we were right back to where we started. And it was crazy. And I remember having a conversation with you and uh, I said, so rates are, rates are, have gone back up at this point, right? Bond yields are going up. Rates are going up. People are still buying homes. Remember we had that conversation yep. and, uh, and we finally figured out why. All the people had pre-approvals yep. at low rates and they were trying to use up those pre-approvals. As soon as, as soon as the bank raises yep. rates, we know we're going to be crazy busy for the next 30, 60 days. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because all those pre-approvals will be expiring. Exactly. People want to use them. People want to take advantage of them. It's like a coupon, basically, right? right? Like, right. hey, I have a pre-approval at four and a half and today's rate is five, right? And I get a discount. I have a coupon. Right. So I want to take advantage of that coupon. Um, so no meeting in February, meeting in March, another one in April. What do you think? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. I'm so yep. boring. Yeah, I, I was, no. I was, I, I have to admit to you, I was, I was in the camp of, I think we're going to see a cut in April. Originally, I'm no longer there. There's no meeting in May. Do you know why I think there's no cut in March and April? Tell me. Because I believe yeah. that when, like late February, the banks are going to, the bond market knows it's yes. coming. Yes. And the bond, the bond market will price it in. Yeah. And then the banks will fight each other for market share. Yes. So our rates will lower. And so then yeah. they don't have to do anything. They can sit pretty on the sidelines because guess and just what? Watch. The rates yeah. are going down anyway. So it's funny, you know, this is something that you and I talk about every year. We've been working for, together for a lot of years and there's something that we see every single spring market. Yeah. Which is one bank comes into the market, wants to steal market share. They decrease rates substantially. There's enough margin in that spread yep. where they come in, they go, me first. Because in all fairness, mm -hmm. The bond market's going down, and yet the banks haven't reflected. Totally, that. totally. When, so when the bond yields went way, way down, they had a cushion. They had, they definitely had a cushion. They have margin, and we saw that about uh, two weeks ago. Yep. We had one bank uh, give a four point five nine percent five year fixed rate when other banks were at like five point two nine, five point one nine, five point two four. And that'll happen again. So that's like you know that's. We call it basis points, 35 basis points, 0.35 in the spread. So if there is that margin that exists, there is. they can do it. Yeah, sure they can. And when the snow starts melting yep. and the birds start singing, people naturally get attracted to real estate always, every year, regardless of the market. Now, if the interest rates also decrease through bond yields, we're talking fixed interest rates, right? right? We're not talking about a Bank of Canada cut. No. We're talking fixed interest rates going down. And we see five-year uh, high ratio, so first time home buyer mortgage rates in a, you know, maybe just about four and a half percent, there will be increased market activity. So when we start to see rates go down, um, you know, economists have been talking about Bank of Canada cutting rates by 1.5%. Uh, 
If rates go down by 1.5%, affordability goes up by about 15%. Yep. Okay. So it means if rates come down, the rate in which a buyer qualifies goes down as well, which means that they can qualify for more mortgage. By and about, guess what happens when that happens? So this, this is the what The prices I, go up. Right. Okay. Like so 15 or 25%. Okay. So this is what I want to hear from you is if rates start to fall significantly. Right. Okay. Low fours. Like yeah. last spring. I mean, this happened. 4.2. Multiples. Multiples. Yeah. Craziness. Okay. So what happens first? Okay. What I'm seeing right the now. The chicken or the egg. The chicken or the egg. Exactly. So what I'm seeing right now, uh, and you're obviously a pro on this, but you know, we're feeling it. Our, our, like our offices are yeah. very busy with pre approvals Anytime right under 5%. Very, very busy right now. Lots of people are calling. Lots of people want to talk about buying homes. Lots of people are buying homes. When I look at the sold listings, you know, looking from the outside in, I'm seeing the homes with the highest days on market selling. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of entry level condos, townhouses, and single family detached selling. Yeah. Still good prices uh, relative to amazing prices. So, so rates continue to go down. Does the entire market get busier? Do prices go up or do homes just sell or do you get both? Prices go up. Prices go up. That's it. End of story. 100%. Uh, so rates come down by 1.5% over the course of say 2024. Okay. That's, that's just, you know, generally saying if rates come down by 1.5%, okay. affordability goes up by 15%. How much does a home price go up if rates go down by 1.5%? So last summer yeah. when the Bank of Canada held, yep. we saw an increase of 5% in May. Mm -hmm. We saw an increase of 5% in June. We saw an increase of 5% in July. So 15%. Very interesting. It's, it's all correlated to the same thing. We were talking as a group before the video even started and we said, okay, well, you know, what are the numbers, right? Like if rates go down by 1.5%, how much more can somebody afford? I said 15%, mm -hmm. but then Peggy said, well, what about home prices? And we all kind of looked at each other and said, would they go up by 15%? 100%. Now we know from 2020 and 2021, Canadians would rather pay more for their home yep. and get a really great interest rate. It's all about the rate. Right, it's all about the rate. Because a house that used to be 1.2 million, uh, let's say, you know, uh, we're sitting in Barrie right now. So Prince William Way, the Queens Way, if one of those houses was 1.2 million, that house would be what today? 950? Yeah, that's fair. Let's say, that's you know, fair. Uh, I won't hold you to it, but just no, generally, that's okay? Fair. So you could save $250,000 on that home because we, we know that home prices may not go back to that level right away, but eventually they will. Three years, five years, whatever it's going to take. Three months, five yeah, years. Yeah, right. It, it, like, who knows? Um, but in order to buy that home at 950000 You have to qualify. Right. And in October, that meant getting an interest rate somewhere around 6.5%. Yep. Which and meant... Who's going to qualify? Which meant stress testing yeah. at 8.5%. And um, we were having a little chat with your team beforehand. And I said, you know, a payment on like $700,000 at 6.5%. It's going to be like six grand a month. Yeah, that's insane. It's insane. I'll rent it for three. Right, right. So we know that Canadians uh, would rather pay a lower interest rate and a higher home price. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when rates go down, home prices go up. There's still going to be increased market activity, right? A hundred percent there will. But the, the beauty of right now, yeah. the sweet spot of today yeah. is that... If you yes. are in the market to buy and yes. you're pre-approved, so you have the benefit of yeah. the fact that we've dropped, the rates have dropped. Yeah. How much more are they going to drop? To maybe another 50 basis points? Maybe. 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 But maybe. by the time they drop 50 basis points, the housing market will go back up. That's right. So if you're out there and you are pre-approved and you are wondering when should you pull the trigger, you should pull the trigger now. Yeah. When you have the inventory to yeah. do so and there's actually homes you can buy, and the fact is the rates have dropped, but the prices haven't increased yet. So once yeah. the housing market figures that out, they're going to go up. So this is something that you preach every day and I do too. Currently, right now, as we sit here, this may be the only point in 2024. This is not a sales pitch. This is, this is true. This is fact. This is the only point in 2024 where you may be able to get the intersection of great home price, right. great mortgage rate. And this is it. So get on it. So if you're a first time home buyer, uh, you could likely secure a five-year fixed rate of around 4.9 today, 4.99 even, for example. Or maybe less. Maybe less. 
Now, if interest rates go down, so you take a long closing date, which sellers are probably happy to take in this market, right? Like a sold sign is a sold sign, right? right. So you close in 90 days. I mean, a, a four month closing would be really long, but let's say you can pull off a 90 day closing. I can just about guarantee you that fixed rates will fall in that time. Yep. Your 4.89, 4.99 may fall to where it was two weeks ago at 4.59. So you get a really great interest rate. But the price of that house has right. gone up already. Right. So let's say uh, I was looking at the solds this morning um, and I saw a few townhouses under $600,000. Peggy, I remember, I remember so fondly having these videos done. And I was like, so, you know, we were in a, we were in a hot seller's market. Interest rates were very low. And I'd said to you, so what if somebody listening to this video or watching this video has a South End townhome. And you're like, please give it to me. I'll get you $850,000 tomorrow for that house, right? So that house, maybe not that exact house, but you know, we saw a couple townhouses on the solds this week um, that you sent to me, so thank you. I like to keep my finger on the pulse of that. Uh, under $600,000. If somebody could buy a townhouse in Barrie right now for under $600,000 and get an interest rate somewhere around 4.5%, is that not this intersection that we're talking about? That's the intersection. That's you're the laughing. sweet spot. You're laughing yeah. because yeah. the prices won't be back down like this. So uh, everybody loves talking, uh, hearing Peggy talk about market predictions. Let's wrap up by hearing about market predictions. All right. So uh, rates go down this year. Yep. Fixed rates, uh, five-year fixed rate, first-time home buyer lands somewhere around what this year? I th I can't see that we're not going to hit 4.2. Yeah, that's, right? that's my Is thought that too. Fair? Yeah. Yeah, okay. my fear about that rate is um, it's not it's not too far off of three point nine nine. Right. I mean, I know it's there's a long way to go. Don't right. get me wrong; that's a full percent from where we are. But Nick, we we went down from six five. Yeah, and, and in and, a couple months. And last spring, we were the best rate that we gave away all year was four point two nine. Right. And it's just not that far away from three point nine nine. And if Consumers see 3.99, this market is going to be in Game for over. a storm in a positive way. I mean, the market activity will just be crazy. Home prices. So we know that as interest rates go down, home prices will go up. What are your thoughts for home prices, you know, for 2024? It's 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 up, obviously. It's up. Yeah. Yeah. And 100%. is there an ideal time for people to buy? I think the ideal time is now. Yep. Yeah. I do, it, and especially if you're buying and selling, yeah. I would do it now because you actually have choice in what's out there. It's a great point. It, because if you are thinking you're gonna buy and sell when the market's, when you're gonna get more for your house, say in the summer or in the spring, guess what? You're gonna yeah. pay more. Yeah. So it's all lateral. And, it, yeah. and, it, and you just have to remember that it, you, if you sell high, you're gonna buy high. Yeah. If you sell low, you're gonna buy low. So that's, that's really all that. But there's doing. homes to choose from right now. That's the point. There's and that's why I, I tell my agents all the time because they're like, you know, they have buyers and they're sitting on the fence yeah. and they're not sure. And they, yeah. they don't know if the house prices will go down lower. And it's like, just remember yeah. that when the rates go down yeah. and, the, and the buyers come back, the there's no will dry up. guarantee you're going to get a house. There yeah. is no guarantee. And, and you remember that in the height of the market, people would... Um, people would sell their home and then they would put a suitable accommodation clause in. Uh -huh. it, we had our, our RICO, yeah. the, our mandate, regulatory body, yeah. our regulatory body. We had to actually get form signed that said the seller understands the risks of selling their home. Yeah. And what we're talking about is you sell your home and you can't, you find can't, another one. you can't find another one. Right. So that was an awful market. It was terrible for families. But it's coming back. Right. So, you know, a um, wonderful family sells their home in South Barry and wants to move to the country. They sell their South Barry home in an instant and then can't find a home in the country. They're trying to move schools. They're trying to find uh, their kids, friends, you know, to play with on a great street. And they can't find the home. So, so the, the only thing I, I, I caution you about is that, yes, well, are those days coming back? Are February 22 prices coming back? I don't think we're going to get that high. Mm. And there's a reason for that. Yeah. Because most investors yeah. deal in variables. Yeah. They deal in, in HELOCs, yeah. which is a variable, yeah. which it's is dictated by point. the Bank of Canada. So yeah. I don't think, and, and a lot of investors have been burned through yeah. this too. Yeah. And even though, and myself included, 
we're kind of dumb and we'll just keep on doing just it. keep on buying but there a lot of investors have been left with a really bad taste in their mouth because we haven't had a correction like this in 20 plus years yeah so they learned their lesson so i don't suspect that that many investors are going to be back in this market so that's why we won't reach the levels we reached in january and february of 2022 which which still to me says opportunity 100 <clears throat> percent. so if your kids were buying their first home it would be now yeah they wouldn't be waiting and if you were looking to sell and buy you'd still now. do it now if i'm looking to sell only yes i would wait you wait you hold on I well, you heard it here first the dice. yeah Everybody loves hearing your market predictions, myself included. So thank you for that.